Hi guys, I'd like to give you a short overview of a couple of telescopes today. The Skywatcher Matsukov 90mm Cassegrain telescope and I've also got its big brother the 127. But let's start with the 90mm. So as you can see it's a very compact package. Very nice. In fact it weighs about one and a half kilos. Um, the diameter of the mirror is 90 millimeters, and looking at the ruler 230 mil to there and about 280 mil overall length. Nice and compact but because of the folded mirror design we end up with a focal length of 1.25 meters, 1,250 millimeters. So if I take the primary cover off you can see the business end of the telescope and you can see what it's all about. So we've got a, uh, a mirror at the bottom end and another a reflective surface at the top and a corrector plate they call it um, which is a concave uh, mirror or in fact it's convex on the inside and that's what reflects back down and then the light comes out of the, uh, the back end of the telescope through here so we put the diagonal on here and an eyepiece. On the 90mm it comes with a tripod adapter rather than a dovetail um, so this will plug straight into, uh, screw straight into a quarter inch standard camera tripod. The larger one has a dovetail. Looking around the uh, diameter we also see there's a hot shoe for or a shoe for um, a finder scope or in this case it's a red dot finder. So let's have a look what else comes with it. So we have a 90 degree mirror diagonal. Um, a little bit poor quality I have to say, not, not great quality. You could probably improve on that quite easily. So that will uh, just fit into the back. Like so. And then when it's mounted on the, the camera tripod, one of the, the um, differentiators about this sort of scope is that the focusing is this uh, uh, quite smooth uh, rotation adjuster and that moves the whole mirror assembly at the back up and down. And then in addition to that, we've got, ooh, if I can reach them, uh, the two very standard Skywatcher eyepieces. So there's the Super 25 long eye relief and the Super 10, 10 millimeter uh, eyepiece as well. So the 10 millimeter on this one would give us a magnification of 125 times, um, 1250 divided by 10, um, hence the 125 times. This one's a bit lower, obviously. This is a very useful one for this sort of spotting scope. This is getting close to being about at its top limit really. But they're both um, good lenses especially this one. I've been using this one uh, on bigger scopes as well and it's a, for the, the price it's a, a really good um, standard lens. So let's have a look at its big brother. Okay so here's the 127 and straight away you can see there's a, a significant uh, difference in size and in fact in weight as well. If I just put that one out of the way for now. So I don't knock it off. So uh, yeah, this is twice as heavy. It's a good three kilos, maybe three and a half. According to the Skywatcher website, it says five kilos, but uh, in this form like this, it weighs uh, just over three kilos. I've just been up and measured it directly. Comes with exactly the same accessory set, so the same type of diagonal um, fits in here as this one on a one and, one and a quarter inch. It has uh, exactly the same uh, focus adjuster as well. Um, and while we're at the back end there, you can see these screws. These are the uh, collimating screws. So we've got big ones and small ones, the retaining ones and the adjusters. Uh, one of the good things about the Matsukov uh, or Max is that they actually very, very rarely need collimating. Um, it's a really stable, solid design and uh, no problems with, with transport. So it works really well as a grab and go scope. So as I said, this, uh, this uh, diameter on this one is 127mm. Um, the focal length here is 1,500. 
um, millimeters. And if I get the ruler again and measure it up, uh, let's do it the same way around. Uh, 320 mil to this point and about 370 mil to the back end of this without the uh, diagonal fitted. Same shoe for the finder and in this case it is a uh, finder scope. Um, the other thing to mention about this one or the difference is uh, this actually contains shot glass which is uh, yeah, perhaps a better quality and actually this has very good write-ups in the press um, about how sharp the the views are through this scope and I can confirm that yes when I've used it as well it uh, works really well so on the other one we talked about it having a, a tripod adapter for like a camera and this one as you can see has got a vixen style um, dovetail fitted to it it does also have a tripod screw as well, so you could actually mount it on a tripod, although at three and a half kilos uh, plus the uh, the eyepiece and a diagonal, then yeah, you're starting to put some weight to go through such a small uh, small connection as a quarter inch or three eighths screw. Okay, so one of the things I mentioned was the uh, difference between having a red dot and a finder scope. So let me go get those now. So here they are. Um, we have the red dot finder scope, plastic design, very light, yeah, really light, just a few hundred grams, even with the battery fitted. Um, the battery that's in there is uh, just a little uh, button cell that fits under this cover at the front. Um, there's a switch on the side, which allows you to switch it on uh, and adjust the brightness of the red dot. And then there are two adjusting screws, so it does it in Altaz. So we have a um, azimuth and a you know an, a, an azimuth and an altitude uh, adjuster here. Sits straight into the uh, to the shoe and uh, screws in place and makes a, a very nice package. So, but the big brother of it actually uses the six by thirty. Uh, find a scope that's fairly standard on the, a lot of the smaller sky watchers. So this is a uh, cast metal design which matches in with the uh, black and white on the rest of the main scope. Um, it's the standard adjustment screws so we've got the two screws plus this um, uh, spring-loaded retaining uh, bolt here. Um, one of the things I noticed and just a little tip almost all of the ones I've seen of these haven't got the o-ring fitted in the front of them uh, and so if you've got a one of these and it's loose at the front the reason is you haven't fitted the o-ring inside there's a groove when you take this out there's a groove on there that requires an o-ring or if you can't find quite the right size maybe two o-rings have, have uh, to fit onto it and that will hold it tight and uh, then it'll, you can adjust it properly it's quite a good adjustment actually so it doesn't actually move if you've got it set up right. So it does mean that when you uh, put it into the device and lock it in with its own little dovetail, it's pretty well aligned already and you're just about ready to go. So would I recommend these? The answer is definitely yes. Um, I think they make uh, great scopes. The 90 mils really useful for as a, as a lightweight scope. Um, you could carry that in a uh, just a large bag. No problem for carry on on an aircraft, for instance. This one also comes with a bag as well. Um, it's a little bit bigger, but actually it's about the same size as a camera bag. I'll show you that now. So here's the bag that comes with it. Um, Skywatcher logo on the front. It's got a handle and a shoulder strap. Uh, it's also got a zip on the inside, which allows you to open it up. You've got a pocket at the top to, to keep eyepieces and diagonals in. Then there's a, uh, a little folding cover and just uh, a nice big space inside room for uh, a reasonable amount of the telescope and also a couple of accessories as well. So that makes it into a pretty nice, with a buckle on the front, pretty nice way to, uh, to carry the scope around. Okay. Great. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, subscribe. I do a couple of videos. I'm just getting into this uh, YouTube thing and uh, yeah, I like astronomy. So if you want to 
joined me on the on the journey please do